Welcome everyone to Every Rock Has a Story. It is my great pleasure today to be with Jose Cuevas, who is a master's student at Boston College, and Jose's got a fossil for us that's going to blow you away. Jose, thanks for being here. What did you bring to show us? Yeah, absolutely. I'm super happy to be here. Uh, I have actually brought a Telosaurus jaw. Telosaurus wow. jaw. Look at those teeth! Yeah, I really like that they're super long because then you can tell that this guy ate a lot of really interesting stuff. Uh, so this is a Telosaurus. It's a species of Mosasaurus. So it's a marine reptile. It lived at the same time as the dinosaurs did. So this would have been around on our planet uh, between 165 million years ago. So was this a dinosaur? This is a little different. So this guy lived in the ocean. Uh, this animal oh. lived in the ocean. If you think of something like a monitor lizard, it's a little closer to a monitor lizard than it is uh, to something like a dinosaur would have been. Oh, okay. So, it's still super cool. Uh, it's a reptile, so it w would have been cold-blooded. It would have been really similar, but lived in a pretty different habitat, and its body looked a little different as well. So, okay. Uh, I think that's why I like thinking of uh, the Cretaceous and the Jurassic uh, and, and the Triassic as the age of reptiles more than just the age, age of dinosaurs because right. we've also got a lot of really unique animals that uh, were flying through the sky, a lot of really unique animals that were swimming in the ocean, um, and fossils can tell us a lot about those animals. So this was a reptile mm -hmm. from the Cretaceous yes. that lived in the ocean? Correct. Wow. Yeah. If I were to look at an animal with teeth like this today, uh, I'm thinking of something like a mako shark. Uh, I could see that it likes catching really fast swimming prey because it's got these really long teeth like forks and it'll be able to catch things like that. There were some sharks and some fish around uh, at the same time that uh, our friend the Telosaurus lived. But this animal would probably be eating things like birds um, and turtles uh, and needs these really long teeth to be able to catch really fast swimming prey that it likes to eat. Yeah, I wouldn't want to get met by one of those guys in the ocean if I were swimming around. This sample was actually found in Morocco, uh, so that's kind of close to the ocean, not super close. Yeah. Uh, but I realized that there are places that used to be ocean that aren't ocean today. Exactly. And if I, was, if I became a ge geologist at the same time as being a marine biologist, I could learn a little more uh, about these different places. I could tell these fun history stories, uh, and uh, I could go more places that were still the ocean. Yeah, exactly. You know what's really cool? Yeah. I gotta show you something which yeah. is amazing. I gotta show you guys this too. I also have a fossil, an ancient marine fossil, that's also from Morocco. Yeah. Hold yours up. Here's mine. You guys have oh, wow. seen this one before probably. This is, well, you know what this is, right? That guy's a trilobite. This right? is a giant trilobite, <laughs> and this is also from Morocco. And then this one is much older. This one's about 500 million years old. Mm -hmm. Yours, you said, is probably somewhere between 65 and 100 million years old. Yeah. So there were at least two times in the past where Morocco was flooded by the oceans mm -hmm. and has all these sedimentary rocks with this ancient marine organism. So you can be a marine biologist, I guess, mm -hmm. and you can be studying these crazy guys. Absolutely. Those crazy guys, yeah. these marine lizards from 100 million years ago, and you can be studying the biology in the oceans today. Mm -hmm. That is so cool. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> 500 million years of marine biological history right in our hands right now. That's super exciting. Jose, how do you know so much about this stuff, <laughs> about marine biology? So when I was a kid, I actually wanted to be a marine biologist, and oh. my parents really encouraged that when I was growing up. Uh, so we would always go to different aquariums and different zoos, and uh, San Diego is a great place for this. It's a great place to grow up. Uh, it's got uh, San the San Diego Zoo, which also has a lot of seals and sea lions, even though those are something you would expect more at an aquarium. Uh, and as I was growing up, I just kept getting more and more excited about this, and I just knew that I wanted to be out at sea. I wanted to be out learning about whales and different animals. And when I got into college, I realized that marine biology and geology aren't super different. We're both learning about the different parts of the Earth system. Uh, and I realized that there are a lot of stories in geology, there are a lot of stories in rocks yeah. that can still tell us a lot more about different Earth systems, uh, about different marine systems. Uh, so I realized that if I learned a little bit more about the geosphere, I could tell better stories about the biosphere and about the hydrosphere. So I did that and 
My parents were super encouraging. Uh, they are both engineers. Uh, so my really? parents are both engineers. Uh, they were really supportive of me learning not just engineering, but all sorts of different science and technology. Uh, they wanted me to learn how to program when I was like eight. So they're super happy that I finally learned how to program now that yeah. I am. Programming and coding <laughs> in and grad computers. School. Yeah. Uh, so I'm just thankful that my parents were able to encourage me to explore a lot of different interests in science, technology, um, engineering, mathematics, uh, and also in art. Yeah. Um, and so I became super well-rounded and I think that's kind of how I fell into geology, uh, like a well, like a well-weathered rock. Um, I was able to learn and have a bunch of different experiences and now I have stories about marine biology and mar stories about ge geology that I can tell. I get so excited when I think about ways in which the geosciences allow me to bring all these different things and all my interests together. I bet you guys have different interests you might want to bring together too. So Jose, tell me something else about this. You said that these, these marine reptiles existed from 100 million to 65 million years ago. Does that mean that they went extinct the same time the dinosaurs did? Yeah, so the world changed really suddenly, and I think of a sample that I've seen from Mexico in a place called Chicxulub, and this was a core collected by a ship called the Joides Resolution. It's like taking a giant straw, putting it in the ocean, and then pulling it up like a push pop, uh, and then you can get all sorts of sand and mud and rock, uh, and if you can look inside that sand, mud, and rock, it'll tell you something about the planets. You'll see something that looks like what we would think of as like normal everyday mud for the Cretaceous, and then all of a sudden we see every grain change. It turns black uh, and it goes for several inches. Um, there are these sharp jagged rocks instead of the really fine grained Cretaceous mud. Uh, and then slowly it turns to something that looks normal but wasn't the same normal as it was mm -hmm. in the Cretaceous. Yeah, it sure did change. And you remind me of a couple things. In a previous episode, Danielle, who you know, talked to us about her sediment core that she took out of the ocean, and that taught us about glacial processes. Her, her episode was all about mud. You're also reminding me, Jose, about this rock, which is going to be part of a future episode, all about exactly what happened and what it was like 65 million years ago that wiped out the dinosaurs and wiped out these marine reptiles. I can't wait to tell that story. This is, this is wonderful. Jose, thank you so much for joining us on this episode. Wow, what a cool fossil that Jose showed us. Did you see those long pointy teeth? That was incredible. Now for a while there, it sounded like Jose was a biologist. And then for a while, it sounded like Jose was an oceanographer. And then for a while, it sounded like Jose was a geologist. That's one of the great things about the geosciences. The geosciences is a place where we can combine all of that together. Some of the greatest discoveries and big questions that scientists are exploring today in the geosciences are about where things come together. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.